So, your first game jam, it's not supposed to go well, right? I'm sure plenty of people have had a similar experience. You're starting to get more serious about making games. You start to have visions of becoming a full-time game developer. You're binging the greats like GMTK, Brackies and Heartbeast. You start a YouTube channel. You make a business name. Maybe even release a short game. And then you hear about game jams, the ultimate test of game design way of putting your creativity on display and proving once and for all you do belong. You are worthy of the title Game Developer. You sit on stream, waiting for them to make the announcement. You spend time thinking of mechanics, setting, a story for your game. You slave for hours, writing code, making your game perfect. You make art that truly makes your game look unique. You make levels, add music, make a UI and even icons. You bundle it all up in a pretty package and hopefully before the deadline. Get it up on itch.io and then wait. And then you realize you did none of it. And of course it didn't go well. It's like competing in a car race for the first time. Sure, you know how to drive, but do you know how to go around a circle really, really fast? So I've made games. I can code, done art, all of that, but never in a two day period or a week. And it's really hard. It's really about what makes game jams so great for learning about what makes a game good. It really cuts out all the fat and gets rid of all the noise. Hi guys, I'm Isaac and I am Shaftev and this is my first game jam story. Hit like and subscribe and let me know your first game jam experience. Was it good? Was it horrible? I want to know down below. The Go Godot jam was announced and I initially didn't think much about it, but I had wanted to start doing game jams and this one was a week long jam. I'm fairly time poor and a week is a much more realistic time frame than 48 hours. I created my first Android game in two months, so I figured I should be able to do a simple game in 10 days. I was sitting on the bus waiting for the theme to be announced, which was 8am on Monday for me. And the theme was growth which was perfect for me considering all the assets I had created at this time were forest themed. I have plans to create a puzzle platformer revolving around our little fox friend here. So I had thought it would be a great time to test it out. I uh, started picturing relaxing scenes of my fox having to find water or dew in order to make a plant grow, to progress up a tree so he could climb to the top, which I think was a theme a lot of people worked around. Uh, but I abandoned that idea for something a little bit more interesting. I pulled a little switcheroo. What if, and hear me out, the growth is the thing you're trying to stop. That would be cool. So the final idea, you play as a fox who has been summoned by a tree of life in order to stop a corruption from overcoming the forest. Damn, I thought, that sounds awesome. So. I had my art already, I had a player controller set up that first night. I just needed to make obstacles for the fox to avoid, and a corruption to defeat. And that's when trouble started brewing. Did I mention I'm time poor? And I have to make art? Which I'm super slow at doing. I spent the next three days designing the corruption, which was a horrible mistake. I ended up throwing all of it out in favour for just reskinning my forest floor tile map to be purple. Something simple which I should have just done to begin with. I had made these tentacle-like things, which you would have to search out, find and kill in order to progress to the next level. And I placed the corruption around the map, which is essentially just this game's version of spikes. I set up a win and lose state and I was good. And then, I had the best worst idea ever. What if the corruption grew as time went on? And the longer things went on, the harder it becomes to progress. Brilliant, right? No, absolutely not. Even though I had thought this was a game changing breakthrough, I had just made the number one cardinal sin in game jams. I had made my game unforgiving and unnecessarily hard. I was going for frantic and chaotic, and I got shit. Total, utter shit. I watched one other game jammer play my game on stream, and oh boy, was it cringeworthy. Felipe Ratu on Twitch played through my game. I watched him fail over and over again. It was bad. I also need to work on my control scheme since the feedback was, it's horrible. And not everyone has a controller. Anyway, you might have already guessed that based off my tone, that I didn't rank well. 
and you'd be right. 92 out of 178, so bottom 50%, which I guess isn't the worst. Could always be lost. But I'm a competitive guy and I like to win. And this is ranked, so I would like one day to find my way to the top. So I set a few rules out at this gym that I think I need to adhere to. Rule number one, no art. I'm slow at art and I'm not great either. I need to have something prepared in advance. I'll get CC zero art online. You don't have a lot of time in jams. Other games use squares and colors to make a game and they do better than you. Art can help you stand out, but it's not going to for me since I suck. It just slows me down. Rule number two, only one new mechanic. Other than that, stick to what you know. Want to make a first person shooter? Well, guess what? No, you can't do that in a jam since you've never done it before. If I'd made FPSs before, then it would be an option and I could add something unique. If you're venturing into new territory, you're spending time reinventing the wheel just to run yourself over. Rule number three, keep it fun. Hard games are the ultimate Achilles heel in a game jam. You're just setting yourself up to fail. Don't punish players too harshly. I'd argue for no game over or level reset and swap that out for a position reset. So hopefully in the future, I'll be able to produce something that's a little bit more fun. But for now, it's back to working on my regular projects for a bit. I just put a course out on Skillshare that goes over the more technical aspects of a platformer jump. It's based off the GDC talk, Build a Better Jump by Carl Pittman, which is a great resource for game developers on bringing real world physics to your jump. In my course, I show you how it can be done in the Godot game engine. We also touch on coyote time and jump buffering, which combine together to create a great user experience. So if you're on Skillshare, then click the link down below. And if you're not, you can sign up for a free trial and watch. The course is short. It can be watched in 30 minutes, so it won't take all day and you'll be able to get some real technical aspects down in the Godot game engine. Then it's on to working on some of my larger projects, which hopefully I'll be able to talk about more real soon. Okay guys, that's all for this one. I'm Isaac, I'm Shaftev. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell, and most of all, have a great day or night, wherever you are.